you do every day, and you can get to find a practical way around that to port this behavior into different platforms and different frameworks and different languages even. They're just integrations. So what do we mean by behavior? Uh, before I get to the definition of the behavior, I'd like to say that any sort of UI component, given the uh, enough complexity and detail, can be treated as, as a system. So it means that if we want to define the behavior of a UI component, it's just more than just a UI representation. It should be more of like a uh, system behavior there. So it means that if you have, like, for example, a submit button here that could react to a click event from the user or any other external resource and could probably, with some dark magic computation, possibly go to the loading button. This means that this is a behavior. And in fact, uh, since I got to communicate that without talking about any sort of framework or library with you right now, it means that this is an abstract concept. So it means that there is no integration definition in the definition of the core behavior here. So no design, no platform, no data flow, and no framework. So it would be also beneficial to find a way to communicate that, especially visually or in the code. So once David uh, Koroshi tweeted something that was really inspirational for me at least, he said that you can actually decouple your user interfaces and the logic there, but I don't tend to use the word logic because that's a vague term for me. I don't know how to define that, but I just we're gonna go with behavior here. I want to say that probably it would be really beneficial if you could just decouple the behavior of user interfaces from the actual implementation because at the end they're just an <clears throat> afterthought, right? So, but it's really cool, David, but how can we do that? Well. Uh, take a video player for an example here. You, I'm pretty sure that you've seen video players around the web or mobile or wherever else. And uh, there are many, many video players around us. There are Vimo, YouTube, Netflix, and other custom ones. Uh, they're always coming from different brandings and they're advocating different designs. They have different set of features. But at the core, there are some shared behaviors down there as when we think about the video player as a separate entity, not something that carries certain design. So, for instance, if you want to like, just talk about one part of the video player as a separate behavioral entity, you can just go to the playing and all of these uh, video players, regardless of all those integrations and differences, they always start from an idle, idle playing state, go to the playing and pause and can toggle that. Now, based on the customization and the rendering part, you can also do that differently. Some of them may just come up with a playing and pause icon. Some of them might just do that by tapping on the canvas of the video but some of, some of them might just implicitly do that by detecting the foreground and background of the app state. But at the core, components consist of, like by thinking about the components as behavioral system, we can think that they consist of core behaviors, like the uh, playing that we just mentioned there, but they also carry a bunch of implementation behavior there. So for instance, if you want to put these core configurations into a dropdown, and you want to model the toggling of the dropdown in, in, a, in, in like a common language, that will be an implementation behavior. So I want to say that modeling once, modeling the behavior once, and reusing everywhere is just a true myth. It's not practical. They also have styles and integrations. But uh, when you want to like, develop that video player in any, uh, like React, for example, I'm, like, for me, personally, when I want to think about that, it's so easy to have a rapid prototype in React these days that I can just think, okay, I'm going to have like a button bar, I'm going to have like an uh, icon there, I'm going to have like a component there, but this is pretty productive, right? I'm going to think about my Redux actions and everything, even MobX, if you will, but this is really problematic in the long term because this means that I'm going to be looking forward, like I'm going to be looking around to find all these behaviors and logics in different like component lifecycle methods, in different actions and everything. I just can't find a single source for those to be able to reason about them or share them with someone else. <clears throat> so the idea is that don't let the languages and frameworks and designs and all these integrations be the uh, be the, the main reasoning for the behavior modeling for your applications. Let them come after that, because if you get that abstract behavior modeling, you can just let any other design and tech around that to sit on top of it. So I kind of wish for that we had a common language that we could just go without, like, just care about the behavior, for instance, just the video player behavior as a core, and it could be integrated in everything, it could be cross whatever, it could be in embedded in any sort of framework, it could be like, just imagine, you do the video player once, it could be embedded everywhere. It would be really cool, right? But it's a bit not practical, right? So if, if you had the language, you could actually think about your uh, components and UI components as systems, not just something that is represented by a framework entity, not a React or Vue component, but something as a component that brings certain behavior with it. So instead of having those components as design reflection, you could possibly find a practical way to implement them in a headless way, 
so that the, uh, the, the, the design can later on just sit on top of that. And the main drive for all of this can be the state and the model. <clears throat> Here comes the state machines and state charts. Surprise, <laughs> everyone talked about it today. So I'm not going to go into uh, what are they. But they're pretty cool because they're abstract. Because all the definition happens in a, in a simple JSON object, it means that they're also going to be portable because JSON is serialized, right? Can be serialized and port to everything else. And almost all the tech and languages these days can can probably parse JSON and try to like come up with, with a machine logic out of that. But if you're working on something like Lang with writing a generic JSON parser, and that is one of the hardest things to do on the earth, then you can just convert everything to SCXML, which is just a standard XML representation of the behavior of a state charts. They're also pretty cool because they can be visualized, so it's going to kind of be like a common language for people who don't understand tech. Because they need to understand, because they're stakeholders, right? They're, they're, like identifying the behavior based on a business value, but they can't just get to see how it works. And they're explicit because you need to think about everything up front without even touching the code. So getting back to the video player example, we can just, it, we don't have time to go to the whole video player, but just the volume manager of that, just the changing of the volume. You could find a JSON uh, representation of how the behavior of the volume can work here. Now, this is not the best implementation of this behavior, because I know that you can just like use extended state and like um, uh, context and everything for that to be more practical. But this is just there to show you that if you wanted to explicitly model that in a JSON, it would be like this. So the uh, volume manager starts from, from an initial volume, and it can be uh, changed by decreasing and increasing events between a minimum and maximum values. But Again, thinking about the whole video player, if you were not to think about them as components and design and like Redux actions and everything, we could think about them as behaviors. And <clears throat> you could just like, for the ease of the whole modeling, you could distribute the whole behavior into different subsystems. And for me, if I wanted to write it as, as a behavioral system, I would just go with playing and volume manager and the config and the quality and the progress and even the presentation mode, right? Because you want to probably detect whether the uh, video is on like a presentation mode or like theater mode or like normal mode. So I did the hard work here and just took the volume manager definition. You just saw that, put it in between 100 and uh, 0 and 100 and created the headless React component for it to be able to reuse and share it uh, in React Web, React Native, and Command Line. And I'm going to have a demo for that to show you. But it also has two different implementations. It also has uh, implementation in render props, and it also has implementation in hooks, just to demonstrate the fact that it really doesn't matter. As long as the behavior is defined in the JSON object in the machine level and everything is computed in that level, it won't matter what framework or language you use. The behavior just works. I, I even like created a demo for the Elm Lang because I wanted to demonstrate the fact that the behavior can be ported into different languages. But that was a hard thing to do because, well, Elm was not my friend there. But I, I also uh, created something for the view because it's a well, React Finland and React conference. It would be cool to just demo something in view there. So demo time. Um, code sandbox. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay, um, so as you can see, this is like the code structure here. They're using the core behaviors and the model for the volume here. It's a just a simple object, uh, as, I shared, uh, as I showed you in the previous slides. And there are a bunch of like machine to components and transform everything. Don't worry about these implementations here. But they're, oh, well, okay. Uh, they're using the uh, same core and uh, React headless. They're shared everywhere. But you can see that, can, can people see that? Okay, yeah. Uh, so you can see that there are two different implementations. There, there are hooks and there are render props. And you can also see that the representation of how the volume can change is also divided into simple buttons and a slider because I wanted to show that this doesn't matter again. And everything is computed in the machine level dynamically, meaning that even the machine uh, uh, decides whether we have the uh, increase or decrease in the next events. And all of, things, like, all of the uh, logic here is down on the machine level, so there's no Boolean, and even the range of the slider and all these values are going to be, uh, like when you change the volume uh, model, it's going to be changed dynamically here. So it's pretty cool, right? You've got a behavior without thinking about the constraints, and you just can share it seamlessly. As the next demo, I'm going to show you how the same thing can work in Vue with the same representation. There are, again, the same files, but I had to, like, come up with, with, a, with a bit of transforming for Vue because I didn't know how to write headless components in Vue, probably with mixins. I don't know. 
But uh, again, the same models are there, and the same uh, transforms and everything are here. So most of it has already been done in the behavior level. It's just the representation here in Vue.js. And everything just works here. Also, there's going to be a React Native demo as well. This is a React Native demo. And it also uses the same thing. It also goes into the next level of abstraction and shares the same headless component because it's just React. And I already wrote that, so I can just seamlessly share that and use the code reuse here. Um, let's get back to our uh, demo here. Uh, it's time for Elm if the conference Wi-Fi works. All right, yeah. Now, as you can see here, I had to rewrite everything in Elm. Well, technically, you could have the same implementation in JavaScript and use the ports in Elm to do that, but that's not the right way to do it. But the, the point here is that the thing that I'm not going to be advocating by behavior, like by behavior first programming here is not the code reuse and code sharing itself. Of course, if you're working the same tech stack, if you're working, for example, for a Slack, and you want to use the same React components and web and uh, like React Native, they will be really cool. You can just share it. But if you're even working on different platforms, like for example, you're working in a team as JavaScript and web developer, you have Android developer, and you have iOS developer, and you're all supposed to uh, create the same video player for your applications, you can do that on the behavior, on like a machine level, visualize that for other people, and start from there, because it's just going to be the perfect starting point for different stacks as well. So the Elm, uh, the Elm demo is going to actually work here as well, if this helps. Yeah, all right. So again, the same representation, but everything was kind of written in Elm, but everything was started with the same mindset of, as we had in the, uh, in the uh, component. So as just some takeaways from this talk, no, this is not a replacement for Redux, if you want to ask. No, because uh, actually, you have to think about this, and you have to do everything before you even decide you're going to use Redux. The whole point is that you're going to do all this behavior and like modeling and everything before you even think about this, because you don't care in that level. And you can also adopt it from just next Monday, because it doesn't have to be written from scratch. You can just adopt it with the new features. You can use it for like refactoring. It would be even cooler if you're working in a team that has like a diverse usage of tech. So as an example, Android and iOS and web, you can just start from the behavior on the visualization level and start from there and implement differently. If you're keen to check the code, it's on github.com slash farscale slash abstract volume manager. And you can also find the deployed version of the slides and abstract component modeling.nilify.com. Thank you.